Welcome to your turn with Cliff Woodards. Again, without Cliff Woodards. <laughs> yes, <again>. But <laughs> I'm Michelle, licensed psychologist, and we have Katrina, life hey. coach. Hey. <laughs> We're going to hold it down for him, right? Yeah, you know? we always We're, hold it down. Yeah, we'll hold it down. Um, he will be back with you next week. I think I'm Michaelis. I think we're having a little technical difficulty, so bear can with us. Um, I can hear you. I, okay. All oh. right. So we're good. Oh, oh then I'm awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so how are you today? I am doing awesome. Just, I am today. I've had a good day today. Yeah. Good morning. Good start to the day. Yeah. How about you? Same here. Good. Same here. Yep. Good Saturday. Yep. It's going to be a busy Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be busy, but I feel like it was like I felt good when I woke up. Yeah. Which is, you know better than stress you know as I a few days ago I read this article and I uh, thought about us right uh, <laughs> so I said you know we can talk about this today what, you know something what? you know something something kind of fun I read this article about the benefits of alcohol and oh, coffee yeah. so there was a study I even printed it out this was yeah. print worthy okay. there was a study done University of California okay. they did a study that um resulted in you know you drink more coffee well in moderation you drink coffee, coffee in moderation and but not the coffee alcohol. and alcohol in moderation okay. and you live until you're 90. really is that why old people always got like give me a pot give of coffee <laughs> they like a pot of coffee we don't know what's in it it could be whiskey more than likely could be. Hopefully. but yeah they concluded that, like, and, and they said that people who drink moderate amounts of alcohol or coffee mm -hmm. live longer than those who abstain. And that okay. people who were, I, they just kind of tied this in, that people who were overweight in their 70s live longer than normal or underweight people did. I've so I guess they like kind of just combined those two yeah. studies. But I was like, oh, they just threw that in they about the threw, weight. And the <laughs> so have they been drinking to get to 70 and I, overweight? I don't, I don't know. Or did you just become overweight at 70 and then once you become 70, gain you a few pounds you're, you're good i was like okay so they just threw that in i don't know what they had to had but to the do alcohol with and coffee makes you extends your life expectancy yes and this specifically so the research found that subjects who drink two glasses okay of beer or wine every day decrease their chances at premature death by 18 percent that's a lot. Of those who drink two cups of coffee a day um decrease those chances by 10 percent okay. so so coffee and alcohol is not that bad for you. Right. Not that bad for but you. But like they said, the, the point, the key is moderation. So right. they're not saying go out and, be excessive. I, I, I guess, you know, get two pints or <laughs> <laughs> drink a case of beer every day yeah. or drink two pots of coffee. I think people but, might misconstrue that though, Michelle. Two cups could be, it could be this size or it could be this size. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you got to be careful. What size is your cup? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I tell I you know, one but thing. but I, I, I like that. I I think it's a good idea yeah. to have two cups. That makes me feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So later today, I'll be sure to have two cups of something. <laughs> I won't say what yet. <laughs> you'll figure it out. I'll figure it out later. You'll, you'll figure it out. But yeah, I, I, I like that research. Because it's, it's so common that people are always saying, even with coffee, that people are saying coffee is bad for you. Yeah. And Actually, it's never that coffee is bad for you. It's all the things that we put in the coffee. And yeah, you pile it with sugar. Yeah. And, and then, the you know, uh, the caffeination of coffee is, I guess, supposedly better than caffeinated coffee. And then people put creamers, sugars, and, you know, I, what is other kind of sugars? The stevia or, like, the the non-sugar, cane sugar, mm -hmm. or something, a, a better type of sugar supplement, basically. Right. The and, cane. Uh, yeah, the, yeah the, cane pure cane. the pure cane. It's supposed to be good. It's supposed to be good pure for you. Cane, so cane, sugar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we got to be specific with that. Wait a minute. We're already talking about drinking right. and coffee. <laughs> pure yeah, cane sugar. Specific, yeah. So. yeah, so I just thought that that would yeah. be great for us to share. So that's our gift to you. Yeah, have your glass Girl, of wine you... today or two, and don't feel ashamed that you do. Right. right. Yeah. So, So what about teachers oh my gosh this week and being armed okay so i guess anybody who makes a decision no matter who you are right the decision to arm yourself with with a weapon mm -hmm. with a firearm mm -hmm. that's very personal you yeah. need to decide that on your own some people do not want weapons around them right. some people want no parts of that so what would happen if we just told teachers 
they well for safety reasons armed. you need to be armed or I even just suggested it I don't know I don't think that that should be a criteria to be a teacher whether you should be armed or not like my, myself personally I'm not against guns but I don't know if I would want to go in my child's classroom and know my my son or daughter you know teacher has a Glock Right. I mean, I, I understand that, you know, we had a crisis right now with the school killings and things like that, and we need to think of a solution. I don't know if guns in the classroom are the solution, per se. I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think that's the solution. I think that if someone has, well, first we're assuming that right. every teacher is stable, is, is yeah. mentally stable. Yeah. So do we make sure they, under, you know, to, to get a gun, you do you go through training right but there's you're supposed no, to go through training hold on you're supposed, you're supposed to, go, supposed through to training, go through training like to actually yeah. carry it legally yeah. you should i mean open carry that's another story that's but, another story but to to be able to conceal it you're supposed to go through training mm -hmm. as of right now not to my knowledge that um, there's no mental status exam you're not no. checking a person's sanity you're not mm -hmm. checking a person's stability so do we say if I'm going to arm this teacher with a gun, do we say we want them to now undergo psychological examinations? What if there's a teacher who is, you know, currently taking medications? Now that is all exposed. Is that okay? I see that's a lot of questions to ask. And there's, you know, so many school districts and so many school systems, you know, private schools, charter schools, public schools. And that's a lot of different levels to determine who's qualified to carry a gun and whether or not they want to carry a gun. And like you said, it's a personal decision. Some people may be against guns in the first place. Right. And then when you should factor in their mental status and, you know, their history and whether or not they know how to operate a gun or the safety precautions for the gun. And who's to say the gun is going to protect the kids anyway? Right. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, but why don't you let us know how you feel? Give us a call at 313-868-0342, 313-868-0351, and 313-868-4336. Call in. Let us know how you feel about teachers carrying guns or being armed. Should we have mental tests checked for them? I think something needs to be done. Something. And it's it's a lot of work. I mean, I, I remember going through the training. Yeah. The, um and the, the um um the C, um CPL training we always okay. call it CCW CCW, CCW yeah. is actually the the offense, the offense but we call it right. CCW yeah. is actually um concealed pistol, pistol license, license yeah. um, and so i remember going through the training mm -hmm. and it's intense it's yeah. it's intimidating mm -hmm. and so you go through the training that's one thing that's like, like been in the classroom i right. mean we've been in school forever right. so we're right. used to being in the classroom okay that's one thing but to actually take that take those things, mm -hmm. those techniques, and apply it. So right. the way the class worked is you, you know, there's actual classroom, the academics of it. Right. And then you, we went to the range after that. Right. And going, through the, going to the range, if you're not shooting a gun every day, that can be very, very intimidating. Yeah. All of a sudden you're firing. Yeah. I mean, you just don't know. There's a lot that goes into it that. I mean, it's like a full body it. workout. It so it unless you're a police officer. And trained it, to do that. And trained to do it. Yeah. You're going to have to go through a lot of training to for me to be okay with you being in the classroom right. with a gun every day and that's what, and with 30 or 20 or 30 children every day under your care and now i have to you know as a parent or as a school superintendent uh what do you call those things principals yeah. you know you have to be aware of what teacher you know is carrying is there something that you need to like keep a roster of uh miss smith is carrying today mr jackson is carrying today right. it's a lot of things that go into that other than just saying arm the teachers yeah because what if one of the children get hold of that gun you know that's another problem and then that's that's dangerous in and of itself and what if the teacher feels threatened by a student that's just mouthing right. off? I mean, let's let's be serious. I yeah. mean, kids are not obedient, yeah. right? So even the best kid is not obedient yeah. all the time. And so what if this kid, what if the teacher feels threatened? What if this teacher mm -hmm. is already kind of anxious and he or she feels threatened by the student who's saying certain things exactly. and they're like, okay, well, I'm packing yeah. right here. So, right. And you so that's go always going to be a threat, you know, because once you arm somebody, they kind of feel a little more secure. I want to say like, cause they feel like, Hey, I could just whip out my gun anytime. You know, I don't have to feel threatened anymore. And so now the child who's normally mouthy and you send down to the principal's office, you know, or SRC, 
now the teacher feels like I could just whip my gun out and threaten them. Mm -hmm. And that becomes another problem because you got to factor in a teacher's mental status. And if they're on edge for the day, are they having a bad morning? You know, are they taking things too far? So it's a lot to factor in. And, you know, high school students especially are as big as the teacher sometimes. So if a most teacher, of the time. <laughs> most of the time, exactly. So if a teacher feels threatened by a high school student, I think their first inclination would be to whip out the gun for defense as opposed to defending the students, what it was originally intended for. So I don't think it's a good idea. Right. I think we have a caller that wants to give their opinion. Hi, you're on the air. Hello, ladies. Hi. Uh, I, I totally agree with all of the things that you said, okay? Um, you covered the gamut from my part. Other than teachers carrying in guns not only could uh, maybe shoot and, and, and get an innocent child. I mean, somebody walking down the hall or somebody just coming into the classroom mm -hmm. and you're out in there shooting and whatever. Also, uh, teachers could get angry at each other. Uh, you know, staff and faculty members. I mean, sometimes people, uh, teachers don't like the principal or something they said or some other staff member. This gun thing is out of control. I mean, it's just ridiculous to think that more guns are going to cure a gun problem. I and know. who's to say, as you guys already indicated, that uh, one of the teachers may have some mental issues too. Just because you're a teacher doesn't mean you don't have mental issues. Right, exactly. I mean, that is a very stressful job. Mm -hmm. uh, and particularly uh, in the schools where our kids are, where we got 60 kids in one room and somebody wants to clown and act mm -hmm. a fool and all that, like you guys said, and somebody whips out, you know, their piece, yeah. and then that's supposed to make everybody good. And the other thing I think that was not considered is, okay, what about something that goes on in the school? But what about something that goes on outside of the school? If right. you remember Columbine, those kids pulled a uh, fire drill alarm or something yeah. and had everybody come out. Right. And right. they ambushed them. Right. So, you know, you could have a student that really gets pissed off or the teacher that's threatening them with a gun, and they could be waiting outside to blow everybody away when they come out of school. That's true. You that's are so, true. absolutely correct. I mean, all of that's on point. A lot to consider. Yeah, and I mean, there's too much to consider when we got an idiot, a stone fool, <laughs> sitting up in the White House calling himself a president. You are who exactly probably has never that. even handled anything outside of a cap gun right. or something. Yeah. <laughs> he right. does not know what he's talking about. He throws junk out, mm -hmm. you know, to throw everybody off of this Russian thing that's yeah. really building up against him. Right. And I think all he did was just like uh, with those kids that went down there and the parents. It was a photo op, just like he did the, uh, yeah. the uh, what was the presidents of the black colleges when they yeah. all went stumbling down there to ask him something. Nothing ever happened, and I don't think anything going to happen with this either. I think it's just another stupid remark and another foolish thing for him to throw out there. That's what of I'm course, thinking. Of course, yeah. Those are all obligations. Yeah, yeah. Not commit. Not, not he's not committed. No, he's know. not committed to anything except doing exactly what you said. Heart. Well, thank you for your call. You made some great valid points, uh, especially the point that she was just talking about, about the teacher on teacher or per perhaps teacher on principal violence that could occur. You know, you get into it with a, a co-worker one day, road rage, you know, parking lot right. rage, all type of things that go on at school, you know, and now we have so many armed people. I don't know if everybody that's armed would, you know, I don't know if that would tone the situation down. I think it would escalate the situation. It would escalate. It would escalate. And not everybody's prepared. Most people are not prepared to yeah. be armed. I don't think so. As a job. Oh, no. God, no. We have another caller. Hi, you're on. Hello. You're turn with Cliff Woodards. Happy Saturday. Hi. Can you guys hear me okay? Uh, we can't understand you. If it, or is your TV up or is the radio up? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday to you too. Happy Saturday. Okay. Uh, I just like to say, just remember that when it comes to our black children, you got that secret code that says, "I fear for my life." So you don't know if you got those people that headstrong and have their racism within them, mm -hmm. knowing that they can say, "I fear for my life," and that child could be um, harmed physically mm -hmm. or actually die. Uh, I have a son in school and all the young men I know that got in trouble and got sent home for the very minute 
don't make no sense. It has nothing to do with nothing. That stayed in trouble and and was pushed out of class and and just totally, uh, you know, taken advantage of and, and missed their classes and their mm. education because there's a lot of people that they that can't relate to our children anyway. Right. And so they constantly get the unfair injustices against them to make them feel like they're wrong or they did something wrong. And, and I'm telling you, it could be I didn't wear the right shoe today and you got to go home. Right. Or you're going to be reprimanded. And if you look at our school system, they got all kind of um, uh, gadgets where when you walk in, you walk in already as guilty before found in because they got to check your book bag, right. your clothing, and all that good stuff. But when it comes to their district, ain't nobody surveillance and nothing. And this is why I think they have uh, the um, easy access to walking in there right. and committing such a crime. So I think it's a lot to consider. And you got to remember, as long as the, uh, what I call the money green junkies <laughs> are profiting, they really don't care about nobody's lives. All they care about is their profits on the ride. Thank you for taking my call. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's that's true. So this, it seems like most people, you know, I, I'm wondering if there's anybody out there that's actually for teachers being armed. I haven't heard from many people that, that, are, that are for it. Not most for this people are against situation. it. I think most people are for being armed, like on a personal, personal nature, but, I mean teachers. but not teachers. I haven't heard the consensus be teachers should be armed. I think everyone's heavily against it. And for the reasons that we stated and the reasons that our callers stated, you know, and then, like she said, some of the teachers, you know, are of different races and may not, you know, understand the area that they're from, such as the police. You know, you, if you don't understand your area, then you're on a heightened, more alert. And like, they, like she said, you feel threatened or you right. claim you feel threatened. And now you have the right to shoot a child who you're supposed to be protecting. And, you know, I don't see these shootings happening at predominantly black schools. So, I mean, as much violence is happening in the black community, right. I don't see these type of shootings happening in the black schools. And like she said, they're happening at schools where there isn't any check and balance system going on. So maybe that's something to look at. Yeah, these schools where they're happening, the trust is already established. Exactly. exactly. It's like you, you, these these kids have been established as the good kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's where it's happening. And so what we have to understand is that even the good kids and the teachers at these good schools, right. they also deal with the, some of the same struggles right. you right. Know, or just struggles of their own. I mean, it's all relative. It is. It a is. A problem is a problem. Difficulty coping is difficulty coping. Right. And feeling I don't think Feeling bullied is could. feeling bullied. I don't think you should. I, and I think that's one of the things that's going wrong. You are thinking that it's going to happen here because of the type of neighborhood or mm -hmm. the climate or the things that's happening in the community. But in reality, the crime is always happening at this other place. And because no one is blaming or thinking that the other place is the cause of the problem it keeps happening right like stop it's like if you're someone tells you to look over to your left and you keep looking to your right you'll never find the problem so you right. do have to look where the problem is and you can't blame other outside factors or situations so because a lot of the inner city um, neighborhood the neighborhood schools have metal detectors. It's, have metal detectors. They have. It's it's like you going through airport security to go into a high school, at or what is it? DPS mostly. DPS. Yeah. DPS mostly. High schools have metal detectors. I don't know if the middle schools have them yet, or the elementary schools, but I do know that high schools have them, and it is it's worse than going through airport security. They search your bags. You walk through a metal detector, and as a student. Does that make you feel like it's a learning environment right. in the first place? Probably not. And I, as I the teacher. No. Yeah. You know, we're all walking through this metal detected place. And like she said, sometimes 30, maybe 40 kids are in one class. But like I, my point is, those aren't the classes that we have to worry about these things happening at. Because mm -hmm. I don't see any DPS or any city schools having shootings. So I no, think that's something that's that we need to happening. consider. I mean, 
yes, we don't need metal detectors and DPS or public schools anywhere, but that is not where the shootings are occurring. So we need to look at the factors that's relevant to the situations that's happening, which are at predominantly uh, suburban schools. They are. So that's where it's happening. Exactly. The the so-called good kids. The so where, exactly. Uh, we're not acknowledging the the pressures that they have and exactly. the pressure that the teachers could have exactly. in these schools. Exactly. So. But I definitely think arming the teachers would be another step in the wrong direction. And that's not being proactive. I think last week we were speaking about being proactive. Being proactive isn't, if it isn't arming the teachers. Being proactive. I read a comment somewhere, and uh, I was I was thinking of ways that maybe we could reinforce, you know, maybe the doors at school. And someone said maybe we could get like a steel door for this for each classroom which would be more reasonable than arming the teachers and then that way you know most teachers teach with their class door closed right so you could close the door as a steel door so that's a safety measure in and of itself so even if a shooter does decide you know to come in unless they come in through hall hour or something like that most of the doors are steel doors Hmm. so it's a less chance uh, That's probably pretty costly, too. It's but probably it's, pretty costly, yeah. but it'll be cost-effective overall. You won't have to replace the doors ever. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I saw something. I read something just this week. Um, there's bulletproof book bags. Right. I, that's a lot. I mean, just yeah. think of what type of fear arises if you, as a parent, mm-hmm. your child is leaving out of the house. Yeah. And so this is how your child is leaving out prepared for war. And, and just think of, yeah. like, what the, the brain goes through and how right. much anxiety you have if you're in a situation where, don't forget your book bag, and it's not just and the regular just book bag, regular, yeah. but this is a bulletproof. I, I think that just, I, then, I would want it to get to the point of just wanting to homeschool if I had to put a bulletproof book bag. I don't know. It's, I don't see how a bulletproof book bag would benefit or help a child because, first of all, it's on their back. And second I guess of all, they can, they can use it. I mean, who's going to have the wherewithal at the age at that point to whip off a book bag and put it around them and use it as a shield? And plus, that's a lot. Like you said, that's a lot of mental stress a child has to think about to carry a bulletproof book bag. And I think the suggestion was that, you know, if they're in the classroom and something happens, then they would. I guess it would be something, you know, they're being directed, I guess, by the least anxious person right. to get down on the floor, grab your book bag. Kind of like when you're on a plane. Right. You're told to the oxygen mask right. drops, right. you right. know, secure your own before helping others. So I guess it would be similar to that. It's, but I'm not sure. It's just I think it just – I think that's excessive to, yeah. to do something like that. Um, but I don't know. We have another caller. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies. How are you? Good, how are you? You know, that is the most boneheaded idea, one of them, that I've heard. Teachers, we want them. I'm a retired teacher, but they say once a teacher, always a teacher. Right. We went to school to learn how to teach. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, at times, teaching can be rather stressful. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there are some people, I mean, I'm talking about teachers, are walking on the edge, mm-hmm. and it don't, wouldn't take a whole lot to push them off. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, if you put a gun on a teacher, all right, you've got some kids, some students, who have very little or no respect for people in authority. Yeah. The only reason they're in school is because somebody told them they had to go, all right? And if there's a confrontation where a teacher's challenged, and, you know, there may be a, a you know, a scuffle, mm-hmm. and, you know, the teacher pulls the gun and pulls the trigger. Look, you've either got a seriously dead student, I mean, you've got a seriously wounded student or a dead student. Mm-hmm. And depending upon, you know, in that struggle, how many shots were fired, you got collateral damage from those other maybe 35 students who are in that classroom. So... I say before they get to the point of putting a gun on a teacher, let the experts, you know, in terms of security people, mm-hmm. figure out how to make a school more safer for kids. I, I mean, you, you can put up bulletproof doors, right. all right? Right. Uh, metal detectors and whatever else that could go into a school to protect those kids. But a teacher with a gun is a recipe for disaster. And, I mean, yeah. we're not talking about a shooter coming in. We're just talking about the scenario that I said is a, you know, 
challenge of a student to a teacher. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you get the big fight. And then sometimes you've got students in there who are an ally to the student who was fighting the teacher. Right. So what do you have? you got two, three, four students on the teacher. Right. And, you know, he or she pulls the gun. And not only that, but even if they're not going to be strapped with the gun, meaning the gun in the holster, mm -hmm. with a, you know, with a waistband, you know, with a belt. Right. Where in that classroom are they going to be able to put that gun where it's safe? Exactly. I mean, I know, you yeah. know, you can take it, put it in the safe with a combination and that kind of thing. Right. Uh, and, and what have you. But... I, like I said, no. And, I mean, I sent Chief Craig an email, uh, I think it was Thursday night, when he said some teachers can be or should be armed. No, I say, other than with a pen, a pencil, and a book, no teacher should be armed with a gun. Well, thank you for your call. You. We totally agree with that. You made some valid points. Uh, one of the points he made was exactly like we were stating, if a child decides to fight the teacher, you know, and children have allies in class, what is the teacher supposed to do now right. that they're armed? Right. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So but, they're less know, likely to use their other skills right. that they would use, like that, that, they, that employ they would employ now use. to defuse a situation. Right. And now it's like, okay, well, you know, I have this weapon or just or, or threatening kids with right. it. Threatening kids with the weapon. Well, mm -hmm. thank you for your call. Uh, we oh. appreciate it. All right. Well, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I think like I think everybody is thinking the consensus of the remarks are don't arm the teachers. But, you know, let's hear what you have to say. Let's hear about some suggestions, maybe some other security measures. Give us a call. 313-868-4336, 313-868-0351, and 313-868-0342. Give us a call. Let us hear your other suggestions. Maybe... Um, is anyone who think that teachers should be armed? So far, no one thinks that teachers should no be armed. No one. I, I like the idea of hiring a security team yes. and the, the experts. Leave it to the experts to the and experts. let them come in. I now, agree. this is not saying that teachers cannot be armed outside of school just, right. just, just to be specific. Just to be, right. We're talking about teachers being armed in the classroom. In the classroom. Hi, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, I, I was just thinking, how about having the classroom assistants in the classroom again? You, you having what? Um, can you turn your radio down? We can hear the echo. Classroom assistant, adult. Okay. Classroom assistants in the classroom again, like we used to have years ago. Okay. Some schools, some schools have that, like a, like a para pro. Or I think TA. they call them para pros yeah, and para TAs. Some of the schools actually have that. Yeah, they do have TAs and paraprofessionals in some schools still. But are you saying that the PA of the TA or the paraprofessional should be armed? Oh, I think we lost her. But I don't, I don't know if she's saying that the TA should be armed. Yeah, I'm not or sure. The, either way, I don't think any adult, whether it's a teacher, paraprofessional, or teacher assistant should be armed in a classroom because it presents the same problems. And, and like we said earlier, and the caller just said, where would we put the gun? Do right. we leave it in the possession of the teacher? Do we lock it up and then the students know where it's locked up? What if the gun get lost, stolen, or taken? I don't think the gun is a, is a security measure in and of itself. I think a security team and experts resolving the problem is a solution. It is. And, I, and we definitely don't need a police officer, officer sitting in no. the classroom. That, that is that, a hindrance kind of to either. the learning it process is. At, is. at all levels. And it just sends the wrong message. That's what you I'm know, saying. We don't it's want just... everything to feel so policed. Yeah. We, we want to encourage kids and hopefully the people that are teaching our kids right. to be able to develop some skills that right. they can self-check and not... And it's sad that this is what this has come to, that we have to develop methods where you have to send your child to school to feel safe because usually sending your child to school was the safety. It was the safety. But we have yeah. another caller. Hi, you're on the air, Michelle and Katrina. Hi. Hello? Then we might have got put on hold, so we'll have to come back to that caller. Are you there? Okay. All right, well, give so, us a call back if you, or I think they're, they're still. Yeah, so it's okay. I think the, 
I think the general consensus is that yeah we do not arm teachers. Arm teachers. Yeah, I don't so. think the president has um, the right mentality to be telling people <laughs> whether or not teachers should be armed, let alone the right training or yeah, consider skill. the messenger. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like consider the messenger for this. He doesn't have the right training or skill to advise a school system, let alone arm teachers. So I think. Yeah, I wouldn't listen to him, yeah. let alone with this situation. It doesn't sound like this is this is happening, but no, we don't no. know. But we do need a solution for the school shootings that are occurring. So maybe uh, someone, hopefully the president and a team, can work together to come up with a solution to stop the school shootings because they have become a weekly thing. And the more they happen, the less people feel that is not normal. It's becoming a norm. It is. So... And we want to move away from that. We want a right. new norm. Right. We want a actually. new Actually, we want. Exactly. So I think we should move into something lighter uh, yeah. to help us yeah. and, and all of our viewers and yeah. listeners de-stress, right? Yes, <laughs> we need to de-stress because that was kind of heavy again. Yes, that's heavy. Yeah. Um, although I don't know if talking about criticism in a relationship will help you de-stress <laughs> because you might start thinking about... <laughs> Ways to criticize people Ways in to relationships. Ways to criticize or all the critical things you've heard yeah. in your in your own relationships. So. Yeah. Well, the question is, is criticism acceptable in relationships? And is it a way to deliver the criticism? It doesn't matter how long you've been with the person. Um, does a person, I think a mental status have to play another role mm -hmm. into criticism. Can your partner take criticism and is it a delivery? What do you think? I think criticism should be acceptable in a relationship, but that's what I think. <laughs> I, I think, like you just said, delivery is everything. Mm -hmm. What happens when, well, let's say you're headed out to to dinner, mm -hmm. to a social event, and you're wearing an outfit that you like, right. and your partner says to you, "That doesn't. I don't like that on you. That right. Maybe maybe you should." change you should switch change into something else right that's considered criticism right. but do you should you just go and change or do you say well i like it so i'm i'm, I'm wearing it do, how what does accepting the criticism mean does it does it mean that i accept it and i'm going to follow your recommendation or does it mean i hear you but I still like it. I'm still, I still like it. And this is what I'm wearing. I think in that case, like people who decide, you know, Hey, um, yeah, you might not like it, but I love it. And I kept it on. You have to be prepared for the people outside of your partner. Who's also going to criticize you that, that day. And I think that's what people aren't prepared for when it comes to criticism. I'm in the privacy of our home. You gave me a criticism. You delivered it in a nice enough way, you know, and I decide, whatever I'm wearing it now I go outside into the world and those people aren't going to be so nice they may have the same opinion and they're going to deliver it in a not so nice way so I think people need to be prepared for that and then you can't go out in the world and get angry at people because you know they say hey well I don't like that you still right. have to you know feel good about your decision so it depends on the way a person can receive the criticism sometimes people they don't receive criticism well and I don't think it matters if you deliver it, you know, as sugary as possible. Some people just don't take criticism well. And it's because they're not accustomed to criticism. People mm -hmm. don't tell them the truth. And, you know, people baby a lot of people. And so when they do hear the truth, they think you're either being mean or rude. Right. You know. They just don't like me. <laughs> they just don't like me. But the truth of the matter is you just, you, you are not be accustomed to being told the truth because the truth is a, I'm not going to say everybody's critique is the truth, but sometimes people say things that are true and it's usually delivered in a critical manner. And you, you just made me think of something. What about that, I guess that deeper but more vague criticism, like mm -hmm. telling someone, you're telling a person, well, you don't know how to communicate right. in a relationship. I don't like the way you say certain things or, or don't say certain things. Right. What is it that you, what do you do with that? Because maybe the way you communicate in a relationship, whether it's to yell when you get upset or mm -hmm. shut down when you get upset, what if that represents a personality trait that you, you really can't change? So do you try to focus on modifying that? 
behavior or, or do you just say, well, this is who I am and you can leave if you want to leave? I think it's a matter of, you know, some people have to understand that, you know, some core personality traits that are specific to Katrina will be specific to me. Now, it's up to me to understand who I'm talking to and say, well, that person matters enough to me for me to take time to deliver it in a different manner. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing. If a person doesn't matter that much to you, then they may not take the time to deliver the message in a different matter, manner. And, you know, sometimes people forget that you want people to accept you for who you are, but are you willing to accept others for who they are? And right. I think that vice versa, flipping a coin type of thing is always what screws people up because they always say, well, accept me for who I am. Right. But you are not accepting. Because they're the most critical and judgmental. <laughs> exactly. You're not accepting anyone for who they are. You know, you want everyone, you know, to feel like that's just you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's just them. And I feel like people aren't acceptive of other people enough to say, just accept me as who I am. Right. So. Yeah, somebody said to me before, I remember just hearing years ago, mm -hmm. you know, we aren't who we think we are. Right. So sometimes you really don't get to know yourself right. until you allow yourself just to absorb a little bit mm -hmm. of that criticism. It doesn't mean become a robot right. for anybody. Right. But sometimes if, if you want to be in a healthy relationship, mm -hmm. you might need to say, well, maybe I I do this, yeah. or maybe I am a little overbearing right. sometimes. Right, or, or maybe I am a little standoffish or vague or, you know, whatever it is that somebody is telling you, you know, it is possibly true, but the, the thing is, do you find a problem with it? And right. I think that's the bigger issue. A lot of people could tell me, hey, Trina, you know, you're dry, your sense of humor is a little bit, you know, abrasive or, you know, whatever the word is they describe that day. Defensive. And defensive. <laughs> you know, that's her favorite word. <laughs> a little bit defensive. Well, she says, you say I'm bossy. So. Yeah, she's bossy. But, you know, we all have our right. descriptions and our words of choice. But the thing is, are you going to take it to heart that day? Because I think each day it matters. Like, maybe today I was being defensive, so Michelle is correct. Maybe today Michelle was being bossy, so Katrina's <laughs> correct. You know, but tomorrow don't mean that you could, you know, keep saying that. I think each day it makes a difference. And, and it also matters if I want to change that like I might like the way I am right. and you might like the way you are so even if that's the way someone feels about you if it's a trait that you like about yourself and it's not hurting people I don't know that's why people don't change then, really some things you really don't need to change sometimes you need to change the person that has the problem with it exactly. <laughs> or exchange or exchange that person, that for, person another for another person, another person. Exactly. <laughs> sometimes that's that's what you need to do it's it's not always about changing you but you do you, you have to have the insight to assess the situation because if you're hearing this it. if you've gone through 10 people and they're they're <laughs> all there's a pattern of them seeing the yeah. same thing yeah. you know what it might be time to work on that it <laughs> might be time to work on that yeah because you i mean after 10 people say hey trina you know your delivery it's not the best then yeah, yeah maybe my delivery is not the best but you know what i could work on my delivery and i'm still gonna say the same thing yeah, that first time you can say, nobody has ever said that to me. Right. You don't know what you're talking about. Right, right. But, but the fifth second person, and third and yeah, fourth, it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. I've heard this before. Yeah, I've heard this before. <laughs> but I don't know. I think I've changed my delivery in a lot of things, but I still feel the same way. So I just find a better way to say yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's what it comes to. Yeah. So you tell us what you think. Give us a call. 313-868-4336. 313-868-0351. And 313-868-0342. Call in and let us know if you can take criticism or deliver criticism. Either way, well. What about love and trust? Being important. You you said you did you you have it the yeah the, there there were seven like seven items on there so we were reading this article whenever we're preparing for a show we kind of text back and forth and um, come up with some things Topics. to talk about and we came across this article yeah about trust being more important than love I, in a relationship you know I agree like with it's that. okay to trust a person mm -hmm. without loving them mm -hmm. but it's not okay to be in a relationship where you love the person and you don't trust them exactly um yeah the huffington post said trust versus love seven truths to why trust is more valuable than love uh trust is the foundation of love which is true honestly because 
I mean, I'll give my opinion after I finish reading. <laughs> Trust is enough. Love is not enough. Trust is not blind. Love is blind. No relationships will survive without trust. Trust allows us to believe. Trust allows us to love again. And there is simply no us without trust. And it's true. Be the, the fact of the matter is, love is wonderful and all is splendor. But if I don't trust you, I'll never be able to open myself up enough to fall in love. And loving you is different than falling in love. I think trust gives you the vulnerability to fall in love. Yeah. And, you know, if I don't trust you, then our love will always be at a complacent, stagnant level. I won't ever be able to grow with you because I don't trust you. Right. I'll, I, I'll, because I love you, I'll be there for you. Right. I, I, I want to support you. Right. But if I don't trust you, it, it's, it's hard for me to step all the way in. Yeah, yeah. It's You're, like, yeah. What, are you, what are you up to? Yeah, you always have your it's, guard up. Yeah. And you so kind of question everything that that person, their intention isn't just as genuine and pure as maybe they mean it to be, or maybe you've known it to be in the past because trust has broken down. But I don't know if you can build trust back up once you lose a certain level of trust. Well, that's, that's the very reason that when people are in situations and trust is lost, mm -hmm. the relationship, they stay together out of love. Right. And it really becomes an unhealthy, unhealthy. type of love. So they stay together, but what happens? There is constant bickering. There's yep. the criticism. Yep. There's nitpicking. Yep. There, there's something, the relationship at that point is really Gone. destroyed. Yeah, You're just damaged. there because, you love hey, the I know you, you know me, and we love right. each other, and... I don't want anything awful to happen. And right. there's, there's all these unhealthy things you tell yourself. Right. To stay. As to why you're still there. Yeah. But if the trust is gone, you're only going to sabotage that person's happiness yep. and your own. Yep. And in the meanwhile, you're not happy in the relationship. So you're still not happy. The trust is gone. And you're ruining each other for the next person or the potential person that could possibly come into their life and build trust or, you know, have love with right and so i don't know i don't think that so maybe trust is more important i think i've always thought trust was more important than love because when you i'm talking about in friendship relationships family relationships you know man and woman wife husband whatever you want to call it any type of relationship trust matters if i trust you 100 percent, my love can develop infinitely for you mm -hmm. but once i stop trusting you I start to pull pieces of myself away, and next thing you know, I don't love you a whole bunch as I could. You know, I don't want to see the hero to come to you, yeah. but, you know, I'm not, like, you know, willing to just jump in front of a bullet for you anymore. Right, either. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think I, I've always thought trust plays a big role. And um, when a person ruins trust, I don't think you can rebuild it. It's very difficult. I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't think you can rebuild that trust. Um and I think it depends on what happened to break the trust. I think it depends on what happened to break the trust and how fast the trust was broken. Because I think sometimes people are together for, you know, five, ten years, you know, and you kind of got a great sense of who that person's core character is. So if they do one or two things, you know, that's insignificant, you don't just say, well, I don't trust you anymore. Right. But if they do something that's significant and it breaks the trust down to such a level, it's hard for you to put that faith back into them. You it is. That, so. It is. So, yeah, you, you just become suspicious of everything yep. and you're doing a disservice to yourself yep. Yep. and that other person. And that other person. But I think that some people go into relationships, if they're just like, I trust you, mm -hmm. that relationship seems boring to them. It's yeah. like, I trust you. That's not enough. Yeah. I, I I want a little bit of you suspense. know whole suspense. They want or, the mystery. Or I, I want some mystery. I don't yeah. want you to be too trustworthy. But then later on, we ask for we, all of this we ask trust. We all those things. You know? Yeah, it's you, like wanting the bad boy or yeah, the bad you, girl you, or, or something. Yeah, you want to you know? date the bad boy, but then you want to think that he's an angel. <laughs> right. You know, even though he's not. So you know, people people want people want trust. People want love. You know, people want to be told the truth about themselves, but in a manner that's in a loving way. But, you know, on the outside, people say, I want suspense and all of those other things that's not really characteristic of trust. Yeah. So they say things that don't really describe trust. Right. 
So yeah, so contrary. Yeah, it's yeah, it's very contradictory. It's, it's almost like people want in in the beginning, especially women, like kind of want this obsessive love. Yep. Like where they're just like head over heels yeah. for the person, yeah. and if you if you only are seeing, hmm, I sat and talked to this person, and he seems pretty trustworthy. Yeah, that's probably not. Yeah, that's going not, anywhere. That's, I don't think I think people give trust uh, so easily and so light, like is you know. Uh, a, something that you can just give and take. And that's the problem. You can't give and take trust. You earn trust. It's not a gift right. to be given and taken away. And I think people go in blindly and say, oh, I trust them. I don't know you to trust you. Right. So I don't know you right. to distrust you either. But once I get to know you, then I can develop a trust and relationship with you. And that's how I am. I'm not, I don't trust you or distrust you. I just don't know you. Right, that's a good that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, I, I don't know you, but I do think you can meet people and like when people talk about kindred spirits, I do oh, think yeah. you can meet people and have this general sense of of trust. Yeah, just like you can meet somebody and you're already suspicious of them. Yeah, like yeah, something yeah. about this person. Yeah. So I think sometimes you do have to trust your intuition. Oh yeah, yeah. See, but that's and still the, not trusting the person. That's trusting, that's trusting my your, intuition. Your intuition. So I'm still not having to rely on them. That's still you know a self thing. Like I'm believing what I feel about a person. And normally when you feel about a person, it's true. Like, it is. If you feel it's like, your truth. At it's least. your <laughs> truth at least until it's proven and. You know, sometimes it's proven pretty fast when you're dealing with the bad boy. So you got to be careful about or that. Or a bad girl. Yeah, or a bad girl. You know, Michelle probably a bad girl. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but of I, course. I, but you know, with criticism, I think people take criticism better from people that they trust. Right. Yeah. Because so. if you think that somebody's just trying to come after you because they they don't mean you well, then mm -hmm. you're, you're probably just not going to say, yeah, I'm going to do this yeah. because you're telling me right. unless you're being sarcastic right. yeah okay yeah okay <laughs> i'll do that today i'll get right on top of it but yeah no so i think it's easier to take advice from people you love or criticism you know i think um what is it what's that word for criticism that people i don't know nice criticism what's the word for it Oh, constructive? constructive? Constructive criticism. Right. I don't think it's a such thing as constructive <laughs> criticism. Well, I mean... it is. Well, okay, so I see constructive criticism as you're, you're not just telling somebody, I don't like this about you. You're, you're telling them, you're giving them an alternative, or you're okay. saying maybe this. You're, you're not just, it's not just mean. It's... I don't think I don't think criticism is mean. I think, are you trying to say that constructive criticism is saying... You, you, okay, I'm going to give you an example. You know how sometimes uh, certain people don't look th in, in things that's flattering to their shape or figure or, you know, <laughs> just whatever. And so a constructive criticism could be, you know, that shirt really isn't doing anything for your body type. But this shirt here, this would make you look, you know, great. Is that constructive criticism? Yeah, or maybe you should wear Spanx with that. I mean, yeah. that's well, whatever. constructive. Right, constructive. That, and I mean, people don't like to hear things like that, but it, it's just the... It's advice. Yeah. It's constructive. Now, they don't have to follow it, but no, there's nothing wrong with that, No, I think most people aren't that, following really. the Spanx rule. Some people should not be wearing certain things, and yet they are, and Spanx should yeah. be included in most of those things. But nevertheless... And it doesn't matter what size you are. Sometimes no, 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 no. It's, it's, Sometimes it's, not it's, about it's not the size. It's definitely not the size. That, no. no. God, no. It's the Spanx. It's, it's the Spanx. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I think... I think people at heart want to look their best and want to be their best at heart. Now, whether or not they can hear the message on how to look their best and be their best is a different story. Right. So. And some people already think they're at their best. So. Oof. I don't, I don't ever want to think that I'm at my best as long as I wake up every day. Because if I wake up tomorrow, then that's another opportunity to be better. Right. Otherwise, I could just die today. Right. So I don't think that's, I don't think like, I don't think that way. But I don't know. People right. have a lot of different views. We, we want to keep reaching for something. We want to keep reaching for something. Have, Why do um, you want to wake up tomorrow just to be the same as you were yesterday? That doesn't even make sense. I don't know. I was <laughs> like, so what, what would you do? What do you do if you had, you, you hit like mega million or something? That's an opportunity. And you never have to work and you never have to do anything. That's an opportunity to delve into a deeper part of yourself and become a deeper 
part of you, you can access more of your brain potentially so that you can be a better person because Because you're not consumed because you're with not consumed nine to five. Exactly. And now you're not consumed with working. So now you get to focus on some other areas of yourself that you can develop and bring out and become possibly greater. So, yeah, I think money just alleviates the problem and mm-hmm. doesn't make you great. You get to see what type of person you really are. Yeah. You know, people say, well, I would do yeah. this and start working on this. And then yeah, you find yourself yeah. with the remote every yeah, day. Yeah, every day. <laughs> it's like, they're not going to start I'm, no I'm going to do that tomorrow. <laughs> they're not starting <laughs> no community projects no time soon. I don't care how much money you give certain people. They're not going to do it. <laughs> just like people say, if you give me a gym membership, I'll go. Uh, honey, you can pass out gym memberships like cake and people still won't go. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> but they're going tomorrow. They're going oh, yeah, tomorrow. Because yeah. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and have a better I'm chance. I'm going to go tomorrow. I'm going to go the next day and the yeah, next the day next and the next day. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the devil right there. Every day is the next day. Every day is, until, is tomorrow. Yes, yeah, tomorrow. But well, sometimes yeah. you do get a push to just to just do things. and Yeah. You, you get that motivation. That's called ambition. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you need people around you to do it. You do need a great circle of motivators all the time. I know some days for me, I can have all the time in the world to Mm -hmm. get get work done Mm -hmm. just you know i said i'm gonna start something new Mm -hmm. and i will not do it (laughs) and then when it's crunch time Mm -hmm. i have all these other things to do it's like that's when i work it in i'll get up earlier to work on it so sometimes for me too much time on my hands doesn't necessarily mean i'm gonna get more done (laughs) no that's just procrastination (laughs) too that's procrastination (laughs) and sometimes you know some some tasks don't require all my day and so, you know, you, you factor in, you mental, mentally people do the work though. Mm-hmm. Well, people who usually do the work, most work is done mentally first. It is. And then it's, it's an always said like that for me. I yeah. think about it. I get so much work done mentally in my car yep. driving home. So I'll take yep. the long way home yep. or wherever I'm going sometimes. Yeah. So that I can just think about what is it that I need to do? Right. You, you create to do lists. I know I, um, my phone, I have to talk to thing. I forgot what the app is called. So I'm always like talking or doing my notes or something while I'm driving. And so, you know, I know people always think I'm talking to myself in the car because I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm usually talking my notes. So by the time I'm home, my notes are done. I just have to construct them into some type of semblance. But, you know, I'm always mentally doing something. So I might not physically do Mm -hmm. the actual you know, proposal until, you know, the day of. Yeah, I have notes and notebooks <laughs> yeah, but I have notes. all over the place. Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> I'm mentally doing the work, so. Yeah, so it's, as long as you get it done. I think that's, that's what matters. Important. Yeah, You don't have to do it five days in advance. I know. Except for students out there, do yeah. your homework. Do your homework early. Don't wait until the night before. <laughs> Okay. Put that little disclaimer on it. <laughs> right, right. We're not advocating to not do your work or be procrastinators right. at all. No. Well, so <sighs> another show has another come to show. a close. Yeah, what you doing this Club weekend? We'll be back the next week. Will we? Um, I actually have. A, I'm going to a. I'm sub, I think I'm going to a jazz concert. Oh. Um, later. Okay. And it's is for the event that I I told you about that I'm working on the project, right. the mental right. health right project that I'm working on. Okay. So it's sort of like a networking. Okay. I think at somebody's house. Okay. And, um, I think I'm gonna be That's doing that. Cool. Yeah. What about you? Um, I don't know. I want to try that fouling thing, the bowling with the baseball, oh, whatever yeah. it's called. I want to try yeah. that. So yeah, where uh, that's at? They do that at yeah. It's downtown at one of those uh, and, centers um, on is it Franklin or Woodbridge or somewhere down yeah, there. Yeah, it's, it's one of those. Yeah, but uh, I think fun. I want to try that. Have we you can done do that as a group one day? Yeah, we, we could do it as a group. That. Just yeah. like, no, I haven't. Just okay. like trap karaoke. We oh, we we'll definitely got to do trap karaoke. We got to find the perfect song. Yeah. Yeah. We'll figure out something. Yeah, <laughs> it's we'll, coming up again, though. Yeah, 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 we can do that. So other than that, nothing. Yeah, nothing at all. Well, I guess we got to get out of here. We'll sit here and just talk, talk, talk. talk. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're getting the signals that right, right. It's time shut to it go. down. Go, yeah. go. All right. So you out there have a wonderful weekend. All right. Goodbye. And we'll see you next time. Yep. <laughs>